What's going on guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're taking out the Moto X Pure. This is Motorola's flagship phone for 2015, but it retails for only $399 when most flagships retail for $600 to $700. So the great thing about the Moto X Pure is that it basically runs stock Android with a few Moto tweaks, which we'll explore in this video. We also get some really impressive specs like a large 5.7 inch Quad HD LCD IPS display, which is good for a very crispy 520 pixels per inch. We also get a 21 megapixel camera on the back good for 4k video recording we have another 5 megapixel camera on the front with a set of front-facing stereo speakers which are still unusual in smartphones today and they're very loud and clear you also get 3 gigs of RAM and it's powered by a Snapdragon 808 hexacore processor with an Adreno 418 graphics processor. Now if 1632 or 64 gigs is not good enough for you, there is a micro SD expansion slot which supports 128 gig cards. Also built in here is faster turbo charging which uses a 25 watt charger so it really rapidly charges the 3000 mAh battery built into the phone. Now the fantastic thing about the Moto X is that you can build your own custom configuration with Moto X Maker. And there are tons of options here from storage capacities from 16, 32 to 64 gigs. You can also choose your frame and front bezel. So we have silver and white, champagne and white, or black and dark gray. We also have a variety of back panels to pick from. So we have soft grip textures, which are available in a lot of muted and brighter colors, or you can jump to real wood, which includes bamboo, walnut wood, ebony wood, as well as charcoal ash wood. We also have some leather options, including natural leather, cognac leather, black leather, and red leather. We also get a variety of accent colors, which includes the trim piece on the back and the speaker grills on the front. You can also add an engraving to the back panel, but you're limited to 14 characters. You can also customize the boot up greeting on your device. And lastly, you can add a SIM card from AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, or US Cellular. So getting to the unboxing, I actually have two of them we can take a look at here. One with white and champagne accents, and another with black and red accents. So the boxes themselves are pretty big, so let's go ahead and peel off the plastic and take a look at the champagne version first. Now the cover of the box flips open, and the first thing you see is your phone front and center, highlighting your custom configuration. So in this case, I have a white phone with a champagne frame as well as champagne accents. I think it's a really nice look. Along the back, you can see this is a textured back panel, and on the front, we have a piece of plastic covering the Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and this very large 5.2 inch display with the white bezels. Of course, with a white bezel, you see basically all the sensor ports and camera cutouts and that sort of thing. So if you want something a little stealthier looking, get the black version, which we'll look at soon. Of course, we have our accessories, which includes a quick start guide and some regulatory information. We also have a SIM ejection tool, uh, which is kind of a nice one. It's got a plastic handle on it, so it's easy to use. Next up, we have our accessories, which includes a free bumper case. So this is kind of a clear plastic hard shell case that snaps around the edges of your phone and provides protection to the metal frame of the phone. Now it's a really simple case. It just protects the edges of the phone and leaves the buttons and ports completely free. And lastly, we get our turbo power charger with a fixed USB cable, which is specifically designed to handle the 25 watt current of this charger. So this rapidly charges the 3000 milliamp hour battery built into the phone. Unfortunately, there is no wireless charging built in here. So getting to the other phone, same process here, just peel off the plastic, lift the lid, and first thing you see is your custom built phone. I really like this one with a leather back panel, red accents, black bezel on the front, and the black frame. I think it's a really slick look. It really serves this phone best because of all these sensors and ports sort of built into the bezel of the phone, which doesn't look as good with the white bezel. So taking a close look at our hardware, again, we have this very large quad HD display, again, good for 520 pixels per inch. This is an LCD IPS panel, no OLED like we had from the previous generation, but it is a very bright and colorful display. It's covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 3, which is sort of rounded at the edges, which feels really nice when you handle the phone. And the bezels themselves are very thin, which is very evident on the white version of this phone. Toward the top, you can see there's a lot going on here, especially if you have the white bezel. You can see everything. So you can see your sensors, proximity sensors, adaptive brightness display sensors, that sort of thing. We also have our front-facing earpiece, which is part of the front-facing loudspeaker. We also have a 5-megapixel front-facing camera and an LED flash. Down below, we'll find the other loudspeaker for the stereo speaker setup and some sensors, which are used for waving across the device to wake it up to show you your notifications on the screen, a feature we're pretty familiar with from previous Motorola devices. Incidentally, those speaker trim pieces are raised a bit. So when you lay the phone face down flat, you don't muffle the speakers. It also prevents the glass from making contact. Along the back, we have this distinctive Motorola curve, very similar design to basically every Motorola phone we've had for the past few years. So it sort of curves toward the edges and sort of 
rounds out toward the top. Along the back, we have our 21 megapixel camera, good for 4K video recording, along with a dual tone LED flash. And right below that, we'll find that characteristic Motorola dimple, which is quite a bit smaller than the previous generation. Also along the back toward the bottom, you'll find a microphone. On the right side, we'll find our Vime Rocker in addition to our textured sleep wake power button, which is very effective here, so you can really tell the difference between the two. Toward the top, you can see this very prominent metal frame with these antenna separators at either side. Of course, we have our SIM tray, which is a combination nano SIM and micro SD card tray. We also have our headphone jack, so if you like your headphones mounted toward the top, well, you're in luck here. Toward the bottom, we'll find our micro USB 2.0 port, which again is flanked by antenna insulators, and this does support rapid charging or turbo charging in this case. Next up, let's take a look at the software experience. First thing I want to do here is show you the active display, which is flashing our notifications. So instead of an LED notification light, you can see instead we have our actual notification on the screen. You can also wave your hand in front of the display to wake it up using those sensors on the front. So again, just wave your hand here and I can tap on that notification, get a preview of it up top, swipe to unlock the device, or I can swipe to launch into the app that's pushing the notification. So getting to the software experience here, let's quickly unlock our device. So on the home screen, the fairly stock Android experience. Swipe down to get to your notifications, swipe down again to get to your quick setting toggles. To make it quicker, just use a two finger gesture to get to both. We also have our recent apps, again, pretty close to stock Android, so we can swipe to dismiss things or bring things forward. Swipe all the way to the right, you get to your Google Now launcher. Now in terms of the app selection, it's mostly close to stock Android with a few Motorola apps, including Motorola Connect, which allows you to connect some Motorola accessories like a Moto 360 and more. We also have Motorola Migrate, so you can migrate to other devices if you want to skip this process in a setup and do it later. Next up, let's take a look at the Moto app. This allows us to manage and explore some of the features unique to the Motorola experience, including the voice command feature. This will actually tell you how to use some of the features, or you can go to more to see a listing of all the commands you can use, and some of them have already been populated with items from your phone already. Now, if we go up here to the upper right, we can actually take a look at four items. So we have Motorola Assist. So these are automated actions that are dependent on your GPS location, time of day, uh, your calendar, and more. So you can add new activities here. Uh, so this allows you just to add a driving meeting or sleeping activity. So for example, sleeping, this allows you to edit what time of day in which your notifications automatically turn off, whether you want your screen to flash on and off and that sort of thing. And of course, meeting mode and driving mode also offer similar features. We can also add our GPS location for our home, work, or custom so it knows how to react once it arrives at those locations. Under actions, we have approach for Moto display. And you can take a look at it here. You can turn this off if you don't want it, but basically if you approach the display, it'll wake up and show you your pending notifications. We also have Chop Twice for flashlights. You can quickly turn on the flashlight or turn it off. Again, that's a feature you can disable if you don't want it. We have Lift for Moto Voice. So this is a new feature, I believe. This is actually turned off by default, but if you raise the phone to your ear, it's able to determine that you want to speak to the voice assistant discreetly, so it won't blast it over the speaker. We also have Twist for Quick Capture, a very useful feature. So all you have to do is twist the phone quickly to launch the camera app and tap the screen to take a photograph. We also have Voice. So you can turn off Moto Voice if you don't want it. You can manage your launch phrase, so you can speak a new launch phrase if you want, or you can improve it. You can also speak your PIN to unlock the device if you have a PIN to unlock your device, uh, which is kind of nice because a lot of the spoken commands will not work when the device is locked, so that doesn't make it entirely hands-free. Now you can also change what commands are available when the device is locked. So you can enable Google commands, which is turned off by default, but you can also enable calls and notifications. Again, you can also disable those. Under display, we actually have two ways of flashing notifications on the lock screen. So we have Moto Display, which I've demonstrated earlier, but we also have Ambient Display. This is Google's implementation, so this will actually flash full notifications right on the lock screen, kind of like you were looking at the lock screen, but in sort of a dimmed grayscale state. You can also turn this off entirely. Now, personally, I prefer Ambient Display over Moto Display. Now, if you're using Moto Display, you do get to some options here, including block apps. So this allows us to limit some of the apps from pushing notifications on the lock screen. So all I have to do is add those apps. You can also select how much detail is shown, so you can show the entire notification content or don't show the notifications at all. You can also enable Vibrate on Touch, which is on by default. So if you have a pending notification and you lift up the phone, it'll vibrate to let you know. And if you want to know how Moto Display works, this will tell you. So for example, the Moto Display screen will not wake up if it detects it's in your pocket, face down, or on a phone call. Voice command works really well here. So you can command the device basically from across the room and with such loud speakers, you can actually hear it pretty well. Okay, Moto X. Take a selfie. So it quickly launches the camera and performs a countdown.
Okay, Moto X, what's the weather like in Rochester Hills, Michigan? It's 63 degrees and mostly sunny in Rochester Hills. Okay, Moto X, play YouTube videos from Detroit Borg. Opening YouTube, playing videos from Detroit Borg. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg. Next up, let's take a quick look at the settings panel, which has a few Motorola tweaks on an otherwise stock Android experience here. So if we go to display, we have attentive display. So we have two features we can toggle off, but are on by default. So we have stay on while we're looking at it. So the camera is able to detect the presence of your face. And if you're looking at it, it won't let the display go to sleep. Alternatively, we have battery saver mode. So the display will go to sleep quicker when we're not looking at it. Now, if you want to see how this works, you have a description of how this works and you can actually get a demo. So if I move my camera's pop filter out of the way, you can now see my face. And it's just telling me that yes, I can see my, I can see your face and this feature does work. We also have color mode. So we have two different modes here to select from vibrant and normal. Vibrant is on by default, but if you want a more natural color tone, you can enable normal. Checking out our storage, I did get the 32 gig version. So you can see I've taken almost two gigs of 4K video and pictures. I have almost five gigs of apps and the rest is free. So I have 14 gigs available. So you can imagine if you got 16 gigs, it would be kind of tight. Under battery, we see our battery usage timeline. In addition to a battery saver mode, which we can turn on or off. We can also set it to automatically turn on if the battery drops down to 5% or 15%. We also have our Motorola ID, which you can associate with your Google account as I already have, and you have Motorola privacy. So you have some features you can toggle on and off. Next up, take a look at the camera app. You can tap anywhere on the shot to take a photograph. You can swipe up and down to zoom in and out. Now, if you want to tap to focus, you'll have to enable it. And there's a little feature here from the settings panel, which you can drag in from the left edge. So if you enable it, you now get a target point you can move around on the shot. So this will adapt exposure and focus for you, but you also get this manual adjuster for the exposure, which is nice. Then you can snap your photograph by tapping the shot. Now, I actually kind of like this because it's really quick. So you can tap and hold to take a burst shot. But what happens a lot is that I end up hitting the home key thinking it's the show to release out of instinct from using other smartphones. Now again, you can swipe in from the edge to get to your carousel of options, which includes HDR, our flash controller here. We also have our tap to focus feature again, you can turn on and off. Uh, you can also enable night mode, which will change exposure uh, for night scenes. This is where you can change your resolution for your camera or for your video camera. So we have HD slow-mo at 720p or ultra HD 4K. So you'll have to enable this every time you turn off the camera, I find. You can also change the resolution of the photo from widescreen or standard. Standard is the native resolution of 21 megapixels. Widescreen is cropped. We also have our timer as well as our panorama mode. You can turn that on and off. We can change the storage location from internal storage to the SD card if you have one installed. And then you can also enable geolocation. You can turn off the shutter sound if you don't want it. And you can also turn off quick capture if you don't want it. Taking a look at the front facing camera, again, it's five megapixels and I've had to switch hands here uh, so I don't block the camera. But the weird thing here is that we have our Android navigation buttons here. And if you want to swipe to activate the settings, you have to be pretty careful. You don't want to brush one of those keys here. And then you can activate your settings, which includes a flash. So you can enable the flash here. So let's go ahead and turn it on and snap a photograph. So again, you just tap the shot here to take the photograph. We also have video mode. So we do have slow-mo on this camera in addition to 1080p HD, and you have two resolutions for the front-facing camera, five megapixels and 3.8 megapixels, which is cropped widescreen. We can also manually control our exposure here, not focus, so you can move the touch target around on your shot to change the exposure, or you can set it manually. So in terms of camera quality, again, 21 megapixels is a lot of resolution even for most modern smartphone cameras, which are usually around 12 to 16 megapixels. 21 pixels does deliver a lot of resolution. So daylight images come out really clear and crisp and you see a lot of detail. You also see really nice depth of field, so you're able to get those nice shallow shots and they look really nice. The camera is also able to find focus fairly quickly and accurately in most lighting situations. Now, in terms of color, it does have a tendency to be oversaturated, so some of the colors will bloom, especially reds and pinks. In terms of exposure, it tends to favor overexposing, but that does deliver really bright, clear images, but some things can be blown out. But for the most part, this camera does deliver crisp, bright, and clear images that I think most people would be very happy with. Now, in terms of low light performance, it's not quite as impressive. So we do see a lot of noise, which I think is indicative of a pixel dense, small sensor like this. You do see a lot of crosstalk and low sensitivity. So things tend to be underexposed. Color accuracy is pretty poor. And you'll actually see a lot of color noise, especially at the fringes of a photo. But if you use the dual tone LED flash, it actually delivers really impressive results. 
For the most part, video is really clear and crisp with a fairly quick autofocusing mechanism so it doesn't hunt around too much. Video has very similar attributes to the still camera so things tend to be a little overexposed and colors tend to be oversaturated so they bloom out here. But for the most part, video looks pretty good on this camera. What is up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Bork to sound the front facing camera of the Moto X Pure, which again is 5 megapixels, records at 1080p HD video, has a really nice wide angle lens so you get a lot in your shot here without holding the phone far away. And it has pretty good exposure computation, color reproduction, and clarity. Now if you really challenge it here, you can see I do uh, sort of get washed out by the background, but that's not uncommon with a lot of front facing cameras. The other issue I see here is that it looks like the exposure is flickering just a little bit as it kind of jumps around, but it's not too bad. And generally speaking, it's a really good front-facing camera. Now, according to Geekbench, we're seeing a single-core score of 1241, a multi-core score of 3441, which is fairly solid mid-range performance for the six-core CPU. Battery life is also fairly average here for a smartphone at around four hours at maximum brightness in my benchmark testing. Typically, I'd prefer to see closer to five hours. Now, when it comes to performance, this phone is running close to stock Android. Even though we have mid-range specs, performance on this device is smooth and quick, even with Android 6.0 or Marshmallow. And that's one of the great things about this device. We're already on Android 6.0, which a lot of smartphones are still waiting to receive. And that's because Motorola is committed to a close to stock Android experience and to updating their smartphones. So this brings me to my conclusion. I think this is one of the best values for 2015. It's not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive, but it delivers a fantastic Quad EC display that's one of the best on the market today. We also have fantastic front-facing stereo speakers, which is great for media and gaming. We also have fairly decent battery life, an excellent camera on the back, 21 megapixels with 4K video recording. And this phone can be highly customized in any way you want to make it really personal, which is a feature no other smartphone really offers. So ultimately, the Moto X Pure is one of my favorite phones of 2015. Not because it's cheap, but because all the core attributes are great from software to hardware. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for me in this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I know it's very late, but I really wanted to get it in before the end of the year. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.